always saying is, you see what's in it, but you do not observe. What's that supposed to mean? Well, look here. You see, they're looking at these two blokes, right? And Watson says he's middle-aged. But dear old Sherlock gives him the once over and says, beyond the obvious facts, that he has at some time done manual labour, that he takes snuff, that he is a Freemason, that he has been to China, and that he has done a considerable amount of writing lately. I can deduce nothing else. Don't you wish you could do that? Not much. Sherlock Holmes is fiction, you know. Not to a lot of people, he's not. I've never known hard as late as this before. Do you think he's having an affair? Isn't that quite a mental leap? No, John. I was in the diplomatic service for nigh on 40 years. And in all that time, not one of my colleagues ever disproved the Edward Jordan theory of human behavior. Which is? Which is that a man who is consistently unpunctual invariably has a woman on the side. Or, since we speak of the foreign office, in some cases, a chap. <laughs> Edward, the only reason I insist on this annual bash is because you never cease to keep me amused. <laughs> yes, do you, Nigel. The only fellow I recruited to the service that still buys me lunch. The only real friend I have left. Oh, to hell with my son. I'm stopped. I'll have uh, Malagatoni soup to start with, and a roast beef and Yorkshire pud, and spotted dick for afters. Very good, Sir Edward. Habits of the nursery die hard, Walter. They do indeed, sir. The same for me. Obviously dressed in a hurry. Her worn-out shoe suggests she walks heavily leaning over to the left. Shops and flea markets. <laughs> Chain smokes. Divorced. I'm very likely got a problem with the alcohol. Now me next time, would ya? Sorry. Comes to summing, done it when a person can't even sit on a bleeding bench without some weirdo clocking them. Good man to call the police. People I used to be put away. I mean, no one's safe these days, are they? Can't even set foot out of hey, your own house. Hey, got her. Turn on. Get your bleeding hands off! You see, Watson, but you do not observe. Get that purse, get that purse. Excellent, take it. She just caught a dip. Police officer. Snap. Thank you, Nigel. It's been fun, as always. Sorry Howard didn't make it. I'm not. Oh, you two fallen out? Oh, it's just... Howard was born weighing seven pounds, 12 ounces, and he's been Mr. Average ever since. Average school, average degree, average foreign office career, average wife. Damn it, I hope he is having an affair, and I hope it's with a six-foot Turkish mud wrestler. But it won't be. Sorry, Father. Hello, Nigel. Hello, Hello Howard. Well done, Howard. Invited to lunch, arrive with the bill. I'm terribly sorry. Bit of a crisis on. Couldn't get away. Great heavens. A crisis in the Central European Department. It's this thing in Geneva. A crisis in Switzerland? What's happened? Somebody forget his Swiss bank account number? Good lunch? Yes. Excellent. I've just been explaining why. Time to go, I think. I really am very sorry. It's quite all right, Howard. Two's company and all that. Damn it, I didn't stand him up on purpose. Take no notice. Someone forget their numbered account. For a man who ended up ambassador to Bulgaria, he can't afford to be so bloody condescending. Good day, sir, Edward. Good day, Walter. Thank you. Good day, sir. Thank you. Give you a lift, Howard? Huh? Uh, no, thanks. Bye, Father. Goodbye. Let's have a drink soon. Howard. What are you doing? Oh, hello, Howard. Buzz, I don't actually care to have anyone snooping around my desk when I'm not here. You left your office with highly classified material unsecured. 
Equally, I don't care to being lectured by third secretaries. Do you mind? How, Jordan? Oh, it's you. No, no, I had to go out. Well, now I'm back. Look, look, why bother me with this? Got a hell of a lot on with the Geneva conference coming up. Well, talk to Tom Byers. Or the other one. What's his name? You're the other one. I've been here 18 months and he forgets my name. Chap's losing his marbles. Are you going to be long, Howard? You know about the steering committee at four? Probably just a touch of PMT. Come in. Sit down, Maggie. Oh, dear. I've got your serious voice on. And you are sitting in your serious position. Howard Jordan, Councillor Rank, head of the Central European Department, acting strangely of late. Well, what sort of strange? Talking to walls, wearing a skirt? Yes. Sorry. Security Department heard he's frequently away from his desk, leaves out classified material, forgets meetings. Well, it usually takes more than that to get us roped in, doesn't it? Let me declare an interest, as they say. I know the man's father, Sir Edward Jordan, retired ten years. It was Jordan who recruited me. We had lunch recently. His son was invited, but he didn't show up till the very end. Seemed nervous, fidgety, finger-tapping, that sort of thing. Said he had a crisis at the office. Did he? Yes, I checked. The big East-West conference in Geneva. Tons of admin required. But you don't think he's overworked? I don't know, Maggie. Maybe I sometimes overestimate my intuition. But I'd like to find out, though. Trouble is usually either sex or money. His father made a joke about unpunctual men. Will it make me laugh? When Howard was late for lunch, his father said he was probably having an affair on the grounds that men who were always late generally had a woman tucked away somewhere. That's an interesting thought. I assume he's married. Eighteen years, three teenage boys. But what about the other hotel? The one on Lake Geneva? We'll need four cars for the HMG delegation. Well, can't you put them in there? Four. Cat, quattro, fiat. You want it in Russian? Chitire. One for the PM, one for the Sec of State, and two for security. Well, see what you can do for God's sake. Well, they'll all have to keep in the consulate. Look, old man, it's a matter of showing the flag. Do we need to reply to this? No, we must have British. Uh, whatever power. you do, don't put our people on the same floor as the frogs. Oh, well, <laughs> they always start them. bitching about our lamb imports. Yes, but they don't have to stay in the five-star hotel. No problem. The Brits love Tuscany. Thank you. All right. Oh, and Harold Acton. Looking shop. Are you for Mr. Jordan? Heaven. That's me. Drama. Your letters, sir. Hello. And uh, who might you be? The PBT. Who might be Mother Teresa. Sorry. Oh, bloody taxpayer. Filling in for a couple of weeks. Uh, do you have a, a name? Or hmm? oh, just a number? Tessa. Oh, not one of the D'Urbervilles. <laughs> My word, aren't you a cultured fellow? They seem fine, thank you. No, we'll pay for uh, does your you boyfriend that? allow you out to well, lunch? Hmm? You couldn't afford it. How do you know I'm not rich? You know what they say about this well, place. The no. thing what do they say? If you want to leave the Foreign Office with a small Draw fortune, up. it's necessary to join it with a big one. No, we must have British cars. Think what the media would do if the PM showed up in a Moskva. British. Anything. I don't care if they're Sinclair C5s. <coughs> Idiots. I see someone is brightening up this mausoleum. Thank you. people there should handle the dog work. They should, but they aren't. The embassy's shoving it all onto us. Heard young John Seaton today having to insist on what cars to use. Mm. It isn't our job. 
Surely you're not going out at this time, right? It won't be long. Howard. What? We really must talk about your father's birthday party. Really, Louise? Can't you deal with it? I must know numbers. This house isn't big enough for anything expansive. Well, the family plus half a dozen. Tell him that. I'd prefer it if you told him. Damn it, why? You know perfectly well why. If you can't stand him, why offer to have his birthday here? Because the only other place would be your sister's squat in the country. I'll tell him. Check on what? Uh, the landlords have asked us to keep an eye out for strangers coming in at night. There's been a couple of complaints. Well, nobody said nothing to me. A uh, man came in a minute ago? What? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's okay. Lives here, does he? No, no, no. But uh, you've got a friend, lady, you know. Oh, of course. Who is she? Uh, just for the record. Oh, I can't ever say her name foreign, you know. Uh, here you are, look. Flat 22. Or three, Illy, oh, 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 I crack her, she is. Thanks. Well, uh, keep this under your bonnet, okay? Mum's the word, Chief. She's Latvian. That's when Rita has been trying to get out for years. I bet she'd do anything to see them again. Maggie? Subject in a taxi, heading east down Dunbar Street, and following. Geneva wants us to confirm five suites in the Ampledorf Hotel. Then confirm them. It needs your signature. Why, for God's sake? The rooms are over 200 pounds a night. <laughs> I can't okay that much. Very well. Anything else? Are you feeling all right, Howard? You look tired. Perfectly all right, thank you. Why don't you ask me how I am? All right. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm searching for something. And what might that be? Well, I want the uh, love and companionship of a good woman. Then get married. No, I, I want them tonight. How about it? How are you? 
Married women in the civil service are about as common as a tomcat in a nunnery. Hold the fort, will you? Are you going to be long, Howard? Oh, wonderful. Oh, let's all go to the movies. Yes. Subject left without warning. Didn't say where. Got you. Out. Subject has left the restaurant, called a taxi, alone. Follow her. Let me know if she comes this way. There's a problem. I've been clamped. Send you right. What do you think? You've got diplomatic immunity? Over and out. Howard, come and sit down. This whole thing's driving me mad. Soon it will all be over. For you, maybe. For both of us. Come and sit down. I swear no one will ever know. Wrong. I will. I'll know. Howard. I don't need your sympathy. P please understand that. If you go on like this, you will spoil everything. What happens to you if something goes wrong? Eh? Nothing. I'm the one with 30 years in prison, if we get found out. I'm the one breaking my oath, selling my country. Oh, stop it! Stop it right now! I'm sorry. But perhaps you would like them to carry out their threats? No. No, of course not. Very well, then. Pull yourself together. Would you like a drink? Uh, no. I am as sorry as you are about what has happened, Howard. Are you really? It is true. I have come to like you. I have come to like you very much. I know what you are going through. Have you seen your father lately? Why do you ask that? No reason. Just curious. I won't have you mentioning his name. You understand me? Sorry. Vinci, you're not in our house. Esther, need marry you. Vinš to išdarīs. Es esmu droši, ka viņš to išdarīs. Jā, labi. I know what you are going through. Have you seen your father lately? Why do you ask that? No reason. Just curious. I won't have you mentioning his name. You understand me? Sorry. Vinš ir lati nervos. She's saying he's very nervous. I don't think so. You go through with it. I'm sure he will. Yes, all right. Go through with what? It must mean the Geneva Conference. It's two weeks away. He's under pressure to find out something quickly. Surely not expected to provide that. Any reference will do. But what if it's presented? Remind me to write the communications about the standard of their equipment. 
They're after information. Any reference will do. Involving his father. He did his nut when she mentioned the old man. If he doesn't cooperate, then they will tell Dad about Son's affair with a Soviet agent. Your silences are always most eloquent, Maggie. Nigel, do they sound like lovers to you? It is true. I have come to like you very much. I know what you are going through. Well, do they? Lovers don't necessarily have to be forever quoting Ovid or Catullus. I've come to like you very much. That's not my idea of pillow talk. It's very English pillow talk. The woman is Latvian. I'd like you to meet Howard Jordan and his father. How do I do that? I'm glad you could come to my birthday party. Who else is going to be there? Not many. Howard's wife pleads lack of space. I've been allotted the family plus six friends. But that's no problem. I don't have six friends. In that case... Now look here. Don't you even think of dropping out. Because if you do, so will I. And then the whole affair would be like Hamlet without Othello. And Iago. I will certainly be there. Good. However, I do have an impertinent request to make. What? I'd like to bring someone. Who? A very attractive woman. Bring her? Let me explain. Now, please. don't bother. Just bring her. I haven't spoken to an attractive woman on my birthday since Joyce died. Thank you. You won't mind if I try to seduce her, will you? Well, feel free. We're just good friends. Ex-envoy abducts woman on 70th birthday. God, I can't wait to see that in the sun. <laughs> Nigel has allowed me to flirt What's with you, Mrs. Right? Ford. Oh, that's very generous of him. May I say that your presence here has considerably brightened up a solemn occasion. Solemn? Your birthday? My 70th birthday. Well, it was kind of you to let me gay crash. How could I refuse? You were described to me as, quote, an extremely attractive woman, unquote. Praise from my superior. That's very gratifying. He was merely speaking the truth. Thank you. Excuse me. Nigel, I hope you're circulating properly. As you were told by the... How old are your children now? James is a, a 18. Um, Robin's 15. Andrew's 13. Are they going to continue the Jordan tradition? What? Cambridge and Foreign Office. Are they interested? I hope not. Well, that wasn't the reply I expected. I'd have liked my grandsons to be here, but that wasn't possible, apparently. I'm afraid it was my fault, Mr. Beaumont. I gave them the impression the party was next week. By the time I'd realised my mistake, they'd made other plans. Rugger, games, that sort of thing. What a pity. Just as well. Poor kids would have been bored stiff. Oh, dear. Poor Wendy seems left out of things, as usual. Wendy, come and meet Mrs. Forbes. I already have. Then come and talk to her. Louise thinks I'm a bad influence on her children. And are you? Appalling. Really, Louise, you don't have to bother with me. I'm perfectly all right. For God's sake, woman, get on your bloody feet. Well, I, I, I'd just like to say, um, Father, on, on behalf of everybody, um, family and uh, friends, that um, we, we, we've taken great delight in gathering here this evening to um, mark your birthday. I'm sorry the boys couldn't make it, but I, I know they're here in spirit. So I, I just ask everybody to raise their glasses and wish you a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. My family, my friends, I thank you for your kind sentiments. When a man reaches the age of 70, then it is indeed true to say that kind hearts are worth more than coronets, and I bathe in the warm jacuzzi of your esteem. I miss my grandsons, of course, 
But I'm not too old to remember my feelings at that age, when called upon to take part in some geriatric domestic function, and desperately searching for a way out, which Louise so splendidly provided for them. So here I am, in the autumn of my years and the bosom of my family. What more could a man desire? In response to your generous toast, Howard, let me propose one of my own to my family and all my loved ones. May they never have cause to hate me. Thanks. Not a family overflowing with bonhomie. Why did you make me sit through it, Nigel? I wanted your opinion. On what? On why Jordan detests his son. May they never have reason to hate me. <laughs> By that time, I was able to recognize a family joke. So you think he hates them all equally, not just Howard? Could be. What about you? What do you think? Wendy lives in a cottage in the New Forest with another woman. Louise is the usual foreign office wife. Oh, the old man can afford to ignore them. But Howard continues the family tradition, the diplomatic service, and for some reason, he is regarded by his father as a failure. So you think the reason that Howard is about to work with the Russians is because he can't gain his father's respect? He knows he won't ever get it if Dad finds out he's consorting with the likes of our Ilyana Samparov. Do you have any better ideas? <laughs> Fred? Yep. Where are you? I followed Marta Hari to an address in Hampstead. Subject just showed up here. Let me know any movement. Out. Yes, it's me. What's up? Our man went in about an hour ago. He's alone and I can't hear a thing from inside. So is her? Fred says the tenant's up in Hampstead. There's something making the back of my neck tingle. There are ten minutes. He's still in there and I can't hear a thing. Stay here. Again, Chief. Let me have the key to 22. Why well, give the spare to the gentleman? You must have a pass key. Yeah, no. Come on, quickly. Yet? It appears not. Why did he have to go rushing off like that on a Saturday? There's a flap on in his department, surely he told you. Yes, the conference in Geneva, I know. But still, all the same. All the same, Louise. Howard is well aware of the heavy burden of responsibility that rests on his shoulders. I thought you might mellow with age. Mellow? Ah. Oh, come now, Louise. I think you like people to despise you. I think it gives you enormous pleasure. Some people, Louise. Not all. But certainly some. <sighs> oh. Come on. <coughs> you take over. <coughs> Survive. Well done. 
He left a note. What does it say? Hang on. I haven't opened it. Do so. Nigel, it's addressed to his wife. Read it. My dear Louise, I'm sorry I have no choice. Forgive me. I love you. I love James. I love Robin. I love Andrew. One day, I hope you will understand. Any idea what it means? Nigel, I'm not in the mood for guessing games. I'm sorry. How do I explain to him I've opened a letter addressed to his wife? I seal it again. He'll tear it up. You hope. Please, let me sit down. Please, I'll be, I'll be all right. What are you doing here? What are you? There was a note. Have some coffee. Howard always worshipped you, and you treated him with contempt. Why? No one should worship another person. Adulation simply invites contempt. He always wanted to be a teacher. He never wanted to join the service. Yet he did it, for your sake, because you insisted. He was a grown man. He could have refused. But he didn't. Because he's weak. How dare you say that? It's not a question of daring. It's simply a statement of fact. Howard allowed me to bully him into a career he didn't want and out of a career he did. What sort of a man does that? Come on, let's walk. Few steps on your own. Come in, Fred. Marta Hari's on the move. Gotcha. You less wobbly? Yeah, it's okay. She's coming back. You better go home to your wife. Yes. What if? What if he has another go? You can't stop anyone killing themselves, not if they're set on it. father's birthday party. What do you want? Well, I'd like to come in. Why haven't I been suspended from duty? Do you think you should be? I don't play games. No games, Howard. Then how is it I'm still here receiving classified material? I assume a man who tries to kill himself to avoid an act of betrayal won't continue with the idea once his suicide has failed. What do you want from me? I want you to do your job. The Geneva Conference is next week. You have a lot of work. Get on with it. God, what are you trying to do? Mrs. Forbes saved your life. I'm trying to save your career. Well, I just wanted to know why Howard has suddenly skidded off the rails, why he was found full of pills in the Soviet agent's flat, and why his father hates him. Why on earth do you think I can tell you? Because it's my impression that your father dislikes you almost as much. Shall I leave? Of course not. Eileen doesn't like to talk about my family. Your father disapproves of your association? We've lived here for 12 years. Before that, 10 years in Cornwall. Never once did he come and see Wendy. Never once did he write her a letter or phone. Disapproval is hardly the word. He had no use for daughters. For women in general. Are you saying he's a homosexual? I'm not saying that. 
because I've no idea. All I can say is that he was one of those brilliant young Cambridge undergraduates who likes joining exclusive societies, bound together by a conviction that they were intellectually superior. To paraphrase P.G. Woodhouse, Queens booming to queens like mastodons across a primeval swamp. He detests his children because they know his secret. Be quiet. His secret? His weak spot, his Achilles heel. The fact that they know makes him fear them. He's always been aware that his actual fate lies in their hands. Eileen, will you shut up? And you know how a man, any man, will react when he realizes that he is vulnerable. When inferior creatures can ruin him. What is his weak spot? You're an intelligence. You work it out. Why did you tell me how I tried to kill himself? You're his father. Louise is his wife. Yet you haven't told her. No. And I repeat, why tell me? I thought you might know why. Of course I know why. The boy's weak. Always has been. Suicide isn't always the weapon of the weak. Some men of great courage have taken their own lives gets caught with a Russian tart, reaches for the Nembutal, even botches that up. Really? What would you have done, Edward? I wouldn't have got caught. You mean you wouldn't have fallen for the bait or you wouldn't have got caught with her? There's a character in Shaw's Arms and the Man says to another, and the trouble with you, sir, is that you vastly overestimate the difference between one young woman and another. Actually, it was Major Barbara. Yes, of course, how clever of you. Do you agree with that view? Nigel, in my time, I've had affairs in most countries of the world, but never with someone who might wreck my career. No woman is that irresistible. But what blackmail would make him want to take his own life? She just discovered good sex for the first time in his life. You've met Louise. I bet she never even takes her gloves off. Our surveillance revealed nothing passionate at all between him and the Latvian man. Oh, damn it, Nigel. Then perhaps he just likes the way she makes coffee. Why are you going on like this about it? Tired already. You are out of condition. The blackmail didn't concern the girl. Look, I'm getting rather bored with this conversation. It concerned you. Me? Howard was prepared to die to protect you. An engaging idea, but highly unlikely. They were going to expose you, Edward, unless he did what they wanted. Expose me? A long-since-retired ex-ambassador to Bulgaria. A powerful weapon. Howard and Wendy have known the truth about you for many years, about where your real loyalties lay. I discovered rather late in life, alas, very little gets past one's children. They kept your secret. Until now? No. They've not betrayed you. Yet you know. Mrs. Forbes paid a visit to your daughter. Ah. The sisterhood. Wendy did not give you away. Mrs. Forbes was able to work it out for herself. That woman of yours is too clever by half. Extraordinary people, the British, aren't they? What other nation disapproves so much of education? What other language contains an insult like he's too clever by half, that one? All these years, I've admired you. I've loved you. 
damn you, Edward Jordan. Demand me nothing. What you know, you know. Remember? Iago's epitaph? From this time forth, I never will speak word. Tom. Okay, finish with them. my car at once. that position. dodged about but he hasn't he must know he's being followed well, he's acting as if he doesn't care the geneva policy papers went through his office an hour ago so that's what they want forewarned is forearmed and that's what he's handing over he's handing over my version of the papers not the real ones <phone rings> yes What is it? Edward Jordan is dead. He shot himself. They've just found his body. So how it doesn't know? Out of my way. Your father's dead. He killed himself.
What are you doing? Creating litter. But you needed that for evidence. Of what? Do we need evidence, Mrs. Forbes? It's been no crime. You know exactly what I was going to do. No, I don't. I haven't a clue. You know about my father? That he was a Soviet agent throughout his career? Yes. And that they were blackmailing you by threatening to expose it. Go back to work, Howard. Well, that's all for the moment. If you'd set up the usual search and surveillance. Oh. Had a card from Howard Jordan. Oh. Didn't he resign? Yes. What's it say? Bosworth School, Yorkshire. Have finally exchanged a political desk for a teacher's. Louise makes a first-rate matron. Any children of yours welcome can negotiate a reduction in school fees for old friends. Love, Howard. He finally got what he wanted. Lucky chap. Lucky his father had at least one good friend. That's all. Dismissed.